Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst. Now, on this week's episode, uh, we're gonna mix things up a little bit. If you're like all of us here at In-Depth Outdoors, we're dreading winter a little bit right now. We're dealing with some of the worst ice fishing conditions I've seen in years. Uh, with uh, extremely cold temperatures and the snow that just continues to pile up, a lot of the lakes that we've checked in the last week or two, you can barely find boots tall enough to keep you above the slush. It's really nasty out there. So if things on your end are starting to wear a little thin, as far as winter's concerned, we understand. That's why uh, you know everything we're doing here at In-Depth Outdoors, we're starting to think spring. We're thinking about some great trips we took last season. And in fact, we're gonna share one of those with you today. Uh, one of the funnest trips that I got to experience last season on open water was fishing with PJ Vic. Uh, it was a tributary to Lake Michigan. And what we were targeting was the spawning king salmon that were returning to their spawning grounds. And uh, these fish are a lot of fun to catch when trolling out of the big boats. They're even more fun when you're catching them on spinning gear. So stick around, it's PJ Vic and I. We're on open water, much warmer temperatures, and no slush in sight. Here today on In-Depth Outdoors. <laughs> So here today, I'm fishing with good buddy PJ Vick. We're on a tributary to Lake Michigan, and we're targeting king salmon as they return on their fall spawning run. And what's pretty cool about this deal is, you know, typically you fish king salmon, it's a big boat, lots of gear deal, line counters and lead core and wire line. Not today. Uh, we're gonna go light, as light can get. When you're fishing king salmon, we're gonna go spinning gear, uh, long rods, and we're gonna be fishing skein for these huge fish. And what should be a lot of fun is the fight on these fish. It's epic, they're savages. So stick around, we're gonna have a lot of fun here today on In-Depth Outdoors. This is a little bit more natural. See, the last time I did this, we were fishing uh, Milwaukee Harbor. Yes. And it was in and around the sailboat tie-ups and yeah. boats going everywhere. Yeah, it's chaos down there. You know, I've fished down there plenty of times, and uh, I mean, there, there, there's a whole lot of commotion going on. Um, it, it's still a great bite. Don't sure. Get me wrong, great bite, but just a, a lot of competition down there. Still a lot of stocking going on down there. There, there still is a lot of stocking. Um, they, they've cut back quite a bit, um, just for the simple fact that uh, the, the, the DNR believes that, or the fisheries biologists believe that the uh, predator, prey, forage levels are, are a little off right now. Um, and they're concerned that the salmon and the trout are gonna eat themselves out of food. So what we wanna do is uh, we want them eggs a foot to foot and a half off the bottom, and I, I don't uh, want the current to be able to grab a hold of our line and, and kind of get us out of the target zone. Gotcha. So we're putting it right where the fish are, right in front of their mouths, and that's what's gonna get us bit. Very cool. All right, so uh, rods here, nine to 10 foot long, uh, really helps lean on these fish while cushioning leader material. So uh, this is a medium action uh, guide select pro from Okuma. Got a Okuma Helios uh, size 30 on here with a full spool of 30 pound suffix braid. And uh, this is the advanced braid. Uh, this isn't the 832 and the difference is the 832 is weaved a lot tighter. It doesn't float as nice. Yeah. And you were mentioning you didn't want a braid that would get down in the water between Absolutely. the rod tip and the bobber. Absolutely. I, I want a, a line that's going to stay on the surface. And what we're trying to do here is we want our float 
to float just as naturally as the current down. So we don't want the line getting grabbed by the current and pull, pulling our presentation faster than the current. Got so it. The, the more spot on we are with our speed and the flow, the more bites we're gonna get. It's just basic river trout fish. Yes, yes. For really, really, really big angry fish. Yes, very angry. All right. <laughs> and then the bait of choice is skein. Uh, it's eggs from a previously caught king salmon. And uh, they'll be in little uh, little groups. How big are you cutting them? About that um, big? I'm going actually about quarter size. Okay. Quarter to half dollar right now. Sounds um, good. And, and we're we're balling it up. You you want that? You want your presentation to look like a ball. You don't want it kind of hanging and dangling. Nasty um, looking. Yeah, it seems like you get more hits if, if you got it in there nice and tight. Kind of shaped like a spawn sack, if you will. Got it. So. Plus side to skein, incredibly effective this time of year. Downside is smells. It's terrible. <laughs> it's strong. It's terrible. <laughs> you may have to burn your clothes after a, a day out here fishing with the stuff. <laughs>
There we go. Boy, you're not right. kidding. Yeah. You get the right angle and they just fall right out. Yeah, they really do. And that was pretty interesting. We both had hits going at the same time there. Yeah, it's just uh, blown. All right, hopefully they're fired up and they're gonna keep going like that. I mean, it's been pretty consistent now. Uh, this uh, pool, yeah. now that we've come back from downstream, come back up here, it's yeah. been fairly consistent. You know, there's yeah. been a few ebbs, but yep. this is the first one we put in the boat. Well, yeah, we've hooked is. up two. We hooked up two, yeah. yeah. Woo. Here, hug, Oop. hug. Come on. <laughs> All right. All right, enough talking. Yeah. Well, back you go. Good work, man. Yep. Oh, that could have been a lot more chaotic. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. I kind of like having the motor in the water because it kind of gives us a rudder to keep the boat yeah, from sliding around yeah, so does. much, but if the fish are biting, we'll leave it up. Yeah. Or a lot more anyway. Right, right. Yeah, I need some skein, that's right. I, yeah, I had a bite right before you hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Hey BG, what time of year do you look for these fish to start running up in the rivers? Depending on where you are on Lake Michigan, whether it be the north, south, uh, east or west shore, these runs happen in, in all streams and rivers along the entire shoreline. Some of the bites will start as early as late August. Um, and right now here we are sitting at what I would consider to be the peak of the bite in this river. And it's the first week of October. Um, this last week has been great. The following week is probably going to be going to be just as good. So you know, for for the peak of the bite, you're looking at about a two-week window. Not that you can't catch bef fish before that or after, but the, we're we're sitting pretty here where we're at right now. Well, you and I were here what uh, almost three weeks ago. Yes. Checking this bite out. Yes. And we were here way too early, at a time when most years it would have been pretty much perfect. Right. First week of September. No, second week of September. Right. And and it, it isn't that the fish weren't here either. Um, the the conditions did not line up. Um, these fish ran up and probably. I would say the beginning of September fish uh, started showing up here, but what we had was upper 60s to low 70s water temps, and that that's just not the proper conditions to get these fish to bite. 72 it, degree water temperature the day we were here. Yes. High skies, yes. flat calm, not yes. a stitch of wind. Yeah, and uh, when that water temp starts getting down in the 50s, and especially in the lower 50s, that that's when these fish really seem to fire up in, in this river that we're in here. Gotcha. Yep. Available in six technique specific models, the new Dead Eye Custom Series Spinning Rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Dead Eye Custom Series Rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Dead Eye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Okuma is inspired fishing. features not found on any other underwater viewing system, the Quest HD from Markham Technologies offers a vivid 7-inch widescreen display, Sony camera, and the ability to send video to a TV over HDMI in full 1080p. The Quest HD offers on-screen display of direction, temperature, and depth. This season, get your eyes below the ice and see what you've been missing on the big screen with a Quest HD underwater viewing system from Markham Technologies. Fish on! Ugh. 
All right. What is it? It's not very big. Can I get a coal hole? I think you might have a coal hole this time. I didn't get a good look at it yet, but plenty strong. Okay, yeah. we'll call it a starter fish, right? Yeah. Nope, not That's a, a king. king. That's another king. That's back to back, buddy. Yeah. You didn't even have that in there 15 seconds. First throw back. Yeah. Well, I was feeling awful upset at that fish from right. <laughs> you know, missing it probably twice prior. Yeah. It looks like, like revenge to me. Well, ah, it's that fish is halfway to revenge. It's about half the size it should be. <laughs> but it's a start. So. Right, Thank you, boss. There you go. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so you still think that's a four-year-old? That's still a four-year-old, huh? It's They're a, all gonna be it's four another female. Uh, it, it, a little on the lighter side, that's probably she a... She just, just hasn't been hitting the buffet table right, as much as the rest right. of Right. And there's been quite a fluctuation, you know, in size where uh, 10 to 15 pounds either way. There we go. All right. So how would that fish be as far as table fare is concerned? You know, they, they're still pretty solid. You know, gotcha. the, the, the meat's turning white, so that would be a great fish to smoke Got if you were so going to smoke it's a not, fish. This isn't a grill fish anymore. Uh, not really, not, this not is, my opinion. This is anyways. a smoker. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I'm not set up to smoke fish, so <laughs> it's going back and it's going to make babies. All right. We will see you later. Good stuff. Here's bait. Fish. Get him? What a bite. All right. Ugh. Well, we got game on here. I'm still trying to clean up my area <laughs> from catching that last fish. <laughs> Feels like a heavy fish. Getting close. Yep, there it is. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. Very All right, nice we should fish. almost switch sides or something because it worked pretty good. Yeah. You back there yeah. with the net and me. I'm definitely in the wrong area. Ooh. Now watch, Come we'll on. swim straight upstream. Hey, if I forget, <laughs> yeah. uh, when we're done, um, I'm having a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Just point it out now. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I mean, I've done a fair <laughs> amount of salmon fishing on big water in boats, you know. This is even better. It's like I said earlier, it's bobber fishing on steroids. <laughs> there. Oh, oh. nope. Come here. There. Oh, oh, got her. Got her. <laughs> All right. Oh, ready? Ready. Oh. All right. There we go. We finally got a buck. <laughs> yeah, this one, I mean, this, this is our oop, first buck of the day. As you can see, it's got the big hook on its jaw. Um, you know, pre pretty easily distinguished. And the, the later it gets here in the spawning run, uh, the more pronounced that hook will get and you'll really be able to tell. Man, they got um, some dentition on them, don't they? Yeah, they really do. That was another fun fight. Yeah. Excellent. Come on. I mean, there it goes. There you go. That is a Man, big fish. It, it is a beautiful fish. I mean, this bite is really heating up for us. Less talking, more casting? Yes, Let's, definitely. Let's do it. Got it. <laughs> All right, there you go, big boy. Off you go. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog, for the walleye that thinks it's a freight train, for the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo, for the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance, new advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance, the mono that thinks it's a braid. Available in six technique specific models. The new Dead Eye Custom Series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Dead Eye Custom Series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Dead Eye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Akuma is inspired fishing. At Aluma, we're in it for the long haul. That's why we make the longest lasting, most rugged trailers on the road. Flatbeds, bike haulers, tilt trailers, and enclosed. If you have a lot to move, we've got your way to move it. 
Our lightweight aluminum trailers will handle even your heaviest loads. At Aluma, we are right behind you with an industry-leading five-year warranty. Because every trip and every load is valued. So really, when you get right down to it, this is very basic river fishing. Uh, fish will come upstream and they're gonna rest when they're not spawning in areas where there's not a lot of current. So what we've got inside of us here, if you look towards the bank, you can see the area where there's not nearly as much current as the main uh, portion of the river. You can see all the foam and it's stacking up there because there's just no current to wash it away. And where we're, oh, I thought I had a bite there, sorry. Uh, and where we're casting our bobbers is right along the edge where that slack calm water meets the main portion of the current of the main portion of the river here. And what happens is uh, these fish will be in that slack water and as we're drifting those bobbers by in kind of that intersection of slow to fast water, they just dart out, grab, and then the bobber goes down. So it's, it's just a real simple presentation used at fishing, you know, whether it be uh, brown trout in southern Minnesota, it still applies here for these king salmon. Oh, there you got go. Got him. Fish. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, bigger fish, bigger fish. Good, good. Do I need to pull the anchor? Yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt. I don't know where okay. this is going. Just starting to get a feel for <laughs> what you're looking for, yes. what the bobber's got to do. Yes. And what you got to do as an angler. You got that? I got it. We got one out in the current here. Yeah, I mean, basically the bobber sits there and it just goes, thump, I mean, and it's just like, oh, yep. something might happen. <laughs> Stand by. Stand by for <laughs> news. So much for middle of the day being dead time, no, right? No, that, that switched around in a big hurry. Yeah. So the fresher they are from the lake, the stronger they're going to be, The more basically. fight they've got in them. Yep. Oh, and that's, and that's a, a one, really huh? nice fish. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not one of those super giants. No. I'm wondering if I should be back down there. You or? may want to go to the back I, deck. Because I think it's probably going to come well, up Well, there's again enough back current there. now where it's going to be really hard to get it to come up right at my feet. Uh, yes. yes! There we go. Woo, doggy. Coming your way. That's twice the fish Whoa. and five times the fight of the last one. <laughs> Look at that. Holy smoke. That one's really pumping some eggs out already. Yeah. Oh. Look at that. That's a lot of salmon. And she is full to burst of <laughs> eggs spawn. <laughs> you tip her just wrong and they start running out. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna make a quick transition. I don't want any more of these salmon eggs in my boat than we've already got. Ah, oh, what a huge fish. Oh. Wow. Feels like there's about a million salmon eggs in there. Such strong fish. All right, release the beast. Awesome. There, gotcha. Hot daggity dog. Fish on. You know, those are like two of my favorite words. <laughs> Hiding in the bush over there again, seems. Same spot as we've had a few hits. Maybe we should break out the mask here and start doing some jigging pig, right? <laughs> Just flipping. Be a lot easier than casting bobbers, <laughs> I'll tell you that. That's the salmon dance. <laughs> Come on, you. <laughs> it really likes it underneath the boat. There, there you go. There you got go. Him. Got him. Oh. Oh. Up at your feet. Well, Man, is that a heavy fish. Oh. Beautiful. Nice fish. This one's been up in the river a while. Yeah, this one has been. It's getting a little bit beat up a little bit, but... she still had a lot of spunk for yeah, you. Yeah, she really does. And eggs aren't falling out quite yet. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Got him! Yes! Got him! Got him! Did I say I got him? I got you him! You got him! <laughs> Good news, I might have him. <laughs> oh. How a 20 pound fish can even go about tapping a bobber like a five inch bluegill is beyond me. All right, I might need to get my keister back here, maybe. This is definitely one of those instances if you're gonna come out here, make sure you got yourself a, a reel with a really good drag. 
We're fishing the Okuma Helio size 40. It's got a lot more capacity on the spool than you would on a typical walleye reel. I'm doing everything I can, DJ. Yep. It's common. I want it to point the There's right the direction. One. There we go. Oh. Oh. In the net. Yeah, that one, that one's over 20. That's probably that 21, 22 pound range. That's good. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> That's a lot of fish. <laughs> My hand. I just can't, I cannot believe how much power they have and for the length of time that they can just keep pouring it on. I know. Hey. And when you get them back to the boat, they, they just stay down, circles, another run. Look. Oh. At that. You want to pop that hook out for yes, me, please? Yeah, he had that one hooked pretty good. <sighs> oh, good. Got her. Got her? You want her? Uh -huh. All right. Okay, so in PJ, just noticed we got the adipose uh, fin there by my thumb, right in front of my sunglasses. That's a sign that this fish was naturally produced. When the salmon first went in Lake Michigan, the thought was it'd be stocking only, that they wouldn't be able to naturally produce, but the fish are proving them wrong. Yeah, there is. Oh. Wow. Ready to rumble. Goodbye. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's show. And let me tell you, that type of action, that type of time on the water is good for one soul. PJ and I cannot wait to give this another try. This was our first real attempt at trying to time this action up in these rivers. Something to keep in mind is, it's all water level and temperature driven. Uh, the fall that PJ and I fished these kings, temperatures stayed really warm late into the fall. Typically you'd be looking for these fish to start entering the river sometime in September, late September. In this particular case, we were fishing weeks after we expected those fish to initially ar arrive and it was all due to incredibly warm water temperature. So, Got to keep it in mind, you got to be able to kind of roll with the punches as far as conditions are concerned, but one thing you can always count on, the salmon will return home, and when they do, if you hook one up, they're a ton of fun. So before we go, I want to remind everybody, we have our second uh, Dream Trip giveaway of the season running right now. That's for the open water trip to Pasha Lake Cabins. It's sponsored by Brandel GMC in Aitken, Minnesota. Go to our homepage, look for the Dream Trip icon, click on it, and get yourself entered for a chance to fish and film with all of us here at In-Depth Outdoors. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.